evening. It's been three days since Pakistan beheaded two Indian soldiers. India has expressed outrage, given proof and demanded action. Pakistan remains in denial, says it has no hand in the dastardly act. Tonight, we bring you a sequence of events that proves beyond doubt the role of the Pakistani army. We shall also examine why the Pakistanis get away after launching such attacks repeatedly. Are there obvious lapses on India's part? Is there deeper intelligence penetration on the Pakistani side? Does the terrain help them? Lots of questions. You can also tweet yours to us as we bring you the inside story of this border attack and the beheading of two Indian soldiers. And Palki Sharma Upadhyay, the headlines first. Russia, Iran and Turkey sign a deal to create safe zones in Syria a day after Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin spoke. The Syrian government and rebels are not signatories to this pact. Brexit will be painful and costly. Britain faces an upfront payment of more than $100 billion to leave the EU. UK says it will not pay. Former warlord and Prime Minister Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, once branded the Butcher of Kabul, returns to active politics months after signing a peace deal with the Afghanistan government. Red Bull Air, wanted in Thailand for a deadly hit-and-run case, flees Singapore after abandoning his private jet. He faces criminal charges. And a miraculous escape for those on board. A small plane bursts into flames and crash lands on a busy street in Washington, D.C. The pilot and co-passenger survive with minor injuries. It began on Sunday. In Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, Army Chief General Kamar Bajwa visited Pakistani camps near the line of control in the Krishna Ghati sector. An attack was being plotted and Pakistan's top commander was there to monitor the plan. Hours later, in the dead of night and under cover of dense forests, the operation began at 4.36 a.m., according to sources. The Pakistan Army, on forward posts, manned by the 649 Mujahideen Regiment, launched rocket and mortar fire. At least four rocket-propelled grenades and bursts of automatic weapons were fired towards the Kripan 1 outpost manned by the BSF. Indian soldiers retaliated with automatic weapons. The firing lasted for an hour. That's a large enough window for trained fighters to cross the border. And that's exactly what they did. A group of Pakistanis from the Army's Special Forces, the Border Action Team, or BAT as they are called, crossed almost 400 meters into the Indian side. The target was an Indian patrol team operating between two posts. Forty-two-year-old Naib Subedar Paramjit Singh, a junior commissioned officer with the Army's 22 Sikh Regiment, was the senior most member of the squad. He was leading the patrol. Under him was Head Constable Prem Sagar of the BSF's 200 Battalion. They came under fire. Sagar and Singh died. Two other BSF men were wounded. The Pakistani BAT team did not leave it at that. They beheaded Sagar and Singh before returning to the other side of the line of control. As despicable as this is, it isn't a first. In November last year, the body of rifleman Prabhu Singh was mutilated by Pakistani forces in Jammu and Kashmir's Machil sector. In October, Sipoy Mandeep Singh was killed and his body mutilated in a cross-border raid, again in the Machil sector. There were similar beheadings in Mindhar in 2013 and Naushera in 2000. Such brutality was first on display during the Kargil War in 1999, when Captain Saurabh Kalia's badly tortured body was handed over to India. We will be joined by Rizal Lashkar of uh, the Hindustan Times to talk about this. But in the meantime, let us tell you what is BAT and how does it operate. BAT or BAT is Pakistan's border action team, which carries out border operations and raids across the line of control. 
Pakistan Special Forces Group, uh, Special Services Group, or the SSG, forms the core of BAT. The team is responsible for operations to dominate the line of control. How well equipped and trained is BAT? The team is trained by the Pakistani Army for eight months and the Pakistani Air Force for about four weeks. BAT members include commandos of Pakistani Army and terrorists. They are trained in guerrilla tactics. Former Army Chief uh, of Staff General Shankar Roy Chaudhary told us more about these teams and how they operate. Listen in. Yes, of course, that is how it is. they are organized. The so-called battalion action teams of the Pakistan Army are uh, small groups consisting of a mixture of Pakistan regular army and uh, uh, militants trained by the Pakistan army and they are used for various actions along the line of control. That's, that's correct. Such surreptitious raids by the Pakistanis are not a first either. Defense experts say the Indian positions in the Krishna Ghati sector were under watch possibly for days. Pakistani forces may even have wrecked the site before launching the surprise attack under the cover of artillery fire and thick, thick forest. Experts say the Pakistani troops would have waited in ambush for hours before launching such an attack. In all such cases, in all such cases where you are launching what is essentially a raid, uh, militarily the custom is or the procedure is that before launching such a raid, uh, you will have to make a good amount of preparation, which includes watching, reconnaissance, observing the uh, area of operations before launching the raid. So yes, uh, it would have been, uh, they would have been under op observation for quite some time. For some time anyway, exact, of course, how long we don't know, but yes. So we know these attacks happen, they happen repeatedly, and the Pakistanis use the same tactics. Why is it that India cannot foil them? One big reason, we are told, is the terrain. The geography and conditions of the region facilitate laying an ambush or launching a raid. This area has thick forests and undergrowth in pockets. The visibility is limited to the bare minimum. The mountains have a number of recesses between ridges and cliffs, allowing small groups of men to move undetected. The line of control, we must understand, is also not a straight line. It has areas jutting into opposing territory. Crossing undetected is much easier in areas where posts are located at a distance, shielded by vegetation or broken terrain. The fence along the line of control is another problem. It was meant to neutralize this constraint, but Pakistan's resistance has resulted in a fence that does not always fall under LOC surveillance, which, which basically means that detecting infiltrators on long stretches is practically impossible. It becomes worse in winter when fog reduces visibility. So we come to question number two. What proof then does India have against these perpetrators when India says that the Pakistani army was involved? Pakistan, as we've heard repeatedly, wants quote unquote actionable proof. India says it has given enough. Listen to Ministry of uh, External Affairs spokesperson Gopal Bagle. the government considers it a strong act of provocation and in contravention to all norms of civilized conduct. Uh, it is significant that the attack was preceded by a covering fire from Pakistani posts in the Batal sector in the vicinity of village Batal. Blood samples of the Indian soldiers that have been collected and the trail of blood on the Rosanala line clearly shows that the killers returned across the line of control. And what is Pakistan's defense? The army's PR wing, the ISPR in Pakistan, has said, and I'm quoting, Pakistan army does not commit any ceasefire violation on the LOC or a BAT action in Batal sector as alleged by India. Pakistan army is a highly professional force and shall never disrespect a soldier, even Indian. We've heard from Defence Minister here in India, Arun Jaitley, and he's said that this denial has no credibility whatsoever. So the question, of course, remains what next? In the meantime, let me go to my colleague Pratyush Dube. Pratyush, the evidence speaks for itself, and we have deliberately not tried to get a Pakistani guest this evening. 
because we do not get want to get into a slanging match but the point is india has repeatedly in, in instances in the past and now given ample proof should we expect action actionable evidence actionable evidence is what india has insisted that is shared with pakistan uh, actionable ev evidence is what india shared with uh, what the indian uh, goc on the border shared with its counterpart in pakistan saying that uh, that that listen if if events such as this happen tensions will only further escalate uh, now palki the details that we have have come to us from sources which are very close to units that have been investigating this entire incident so this is something that uh, that that you know that comes up uh, Th that is that is very current. It's perhaps some of this is has not been put out in public domain before. What we know is that the BAT or the Border Action Team was not just comprised of professional soldiers. Something that Pakistan has insisted even in its written defence of this entire incident. But it also consisted consisted of members from the 649th uh, Mujahideen Squad, uh, a squad formed of irregulars that uh, Pakistan has used even in the past. So the Border Action Team is not just professional soldiers. Uh, and this, remember, coming from an army that. Uh, that decided not to own up to its own dead in the Kargil war in 1999 so claims of being professional from them sound a little uh, far fetched coming to what india's options really have been on the border uh, some of the issues that you highlighted palki uh, they are our constraints that have been put into place by geography it is simply the terrain on which you operate that makes such operations and uh, so difficult and the idea to that one can absolutely make the border port is free that 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 at all checks along the loc can be made in such a manner that uh, that there would be no intrusion from pakistan is something that we've been trying for a very long po point of time but it's going to be difficult to execute some of the things that we have done and which has helped us to a large extent has of course been a uh, use of drones along uh, along a large sector that were difficult to man we have we have uh, started putting up electrified fences in these areas uh, we have uh, we have put up advanced monitoring systems uh, but none of this really uh you know will work if pakistan breaks the basic tenets of engagement and commits heinous acts such as coming into indian territory and beheading or uh, mutilating uh, one of indian army's uh, two in fact of indian army's own and this is something uh, you know which has uh, raised echoes in indian army because they said that you know we performed with utmost uh, professionalism acts such as this are easy to do uh, they don't strike fear in the in our hearts they only further uh strengthen our cause that uh, that you know that we are fighting an army that's unprofessional we are fighting an army that believes in mutilating professional soldiers and uh, and and which is why this will only further escalate tension so india's operational options on the ground seem to be limited the, but the limited ones that we have have already been activated uh today we had the army chief commenting and uh, before this we had the defense minister arun jetli saying that yes india will retaliate and we will retaliate at a time uh, and a place of our own choosing so we are we are having very strong indications from both the armed forces as well as civilian government ensuring that uh, should the time come india will Uh, respond to what Pakistan has been done, and which is clearly a provocation. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Pratyush. I'm told Rizal Lashkar, uh, associate editor of Hindustan Times, is with us. Rizal, good evening. Is it clear, given uh, what our sources have told us, and we have reconstructed the sequence of events, is it absolutely clear now that the Pakistan Army has institutionalized this kind of barbarity, uh, given the number of cases we see of soldiers being mutilated, and mastered the art of denial? Well, you know, it's pretty clear from you know the way the uh, external affairs ministry yesterday you know talked about the evidence that is available. It's very very clear that this has now become part of the tactics of you know these border action teams. What is even more worrying this time is that uh, the reports we are getting is that this was a border action team comprising only Pakistan Army regulars. In the past, there have been instances of terrorists operating along with the border action team. Uh, but uh, this time it seems it's just pakistan army regulars which makes it even more heinous because these were not terrorists who sneaked across the loc these were not non state actors these were very much state actors you know people from pakistan's elite uh, combat units and if this is the sort of uh, you know provocation that is there it will be very very dif difficult to kind of de escalate the situation on the loc it's just going to have a snowball effect and you know there will be retaliation from the indian side at some time and how can we talk about de escalation or can there be de escalation given indications that the army chief in pakistan may have been directly involved he visited this area just hours before this attack was launched exactly but also if you look at the past this is the same army chief when he took over 
when he had his first interaction with the media in Pakistan, he said that things would quieten down along the LOC. And for a few weeks after that, there was a reduction. So it's very clear that this is a man who, when he wants, can turn off the tab, but at the same time, he turns on the tab. Uh, of course, there are some people who are now linking this mutilation that happened on May 1 to, you know, a, a certain visit that was made to Pakistan by an Indian businessman. And a lot of people are saying that possibly this could have been an action by the Pakistan army to scuttle any sort of, you know, uh, attempt at uh, rapprochement or to get some sort of a back channel going. And the questions I asked at the beginning of this broadcast, Reza, these attacks keep happening on the Indian forces. Is it a lapse or is this something that cannot be prevented given the kind of porous border and the very difficult terrain uh, that they negotiate? Well, I mean, look, we have, I think we have done an exemplary job on the LOC. I mean, the kind of defenses we put in, the way we're using drones, the way we, we fenced off the LOC. But, you know, there is the human element. I mean, these are guys who are posted in very, you know, trying circumstances. They are out on patrol. I mean, a thing like this, I mean, even if you have intelligence, it's not something that is going to be easy to prevent. Uh, I mean, these are guys who, uh, these are, remember, these are elite Pakistani soldiers. Not that our guys are any less, but these guys got in. They had the element of surprise. So, I mean, if somebody is going to use tactics like this, it's going to be very difficult to, you know, have a kind of a 100% foolproof policy. I mean, st stuff like this, you can't prevent every incident. There will be incidents of this sort. And I think possibly, you know, there are many more incidences that, are, that have been prevented and we don't hear about. It, it seems to have become a vicious and deadly cycle, though, and so the million-dollar question and the final one, Reza, what next? Well, I mean, obviously, the ideal situation is where, you know, you have some sort of de-escalation, you have the civilian governments talking, but on the Pakistani side, you know, you have a civilian government which is almost on the ropes. Uh, you have a prime minister who is facing all sorts of corruption allegations. He is going into elections next year. He can't afford to look soft on India. So I really don't know how we're going to take the next step. I mean, clearly, you know, the, the, the back channel has worked for India and Pakistan. There was the secret meeting between the NSAs that helped. Uh, there was, uh, you know, uh, Sajjan Jindal was involved in an earlier attempt to facilitate a meeting between the two prime ministers in Kathmandu. I, I guess that would possibly be the only logical way to do it. But then you have the foreign policy levers being held by the Pakistani military and the ISI, and that really complicates matters. So, I mean, I, 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 I mean, personally, I really don't know what's going to be the next step. Right. Reza Lashkar, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining us here on Gravitas. We're going to take a short break at this point as we wait for what the government of India plans and does next on this story. Ahead on this show, though, India's satellite diplomacy, something even China has been forced to applaud.